Welcome to the Boost Your IQ video series. This series demonstrates setup and operation of unique features on the Liquid Control's IQ family of registers. Be sure to follow our YouTube channel and you will be notified as new features are released in this video format. I'm Jeff Hegeman and today I'm going to demonstrate the water and fuel sensor configuration and controls on the IQ register. To start, we're going to put the IQ register in the calibration position. To do this, just thread the bolt out on the side of the register about six turns. Once you do this, the register will enter the calibration mode. You'll see it's automatically turned to the main menu. If you have a ticket printer connected, it will also print a ticket at this time. From the main menu, use the down arrow to navigate to the setup menu, then press OK. Once in the setup menu, use the down arrow to navigate to I.O. Setup and press OK. The I.O. Setup menu is used to set up any peripheral equipment that is connected to the IQ register. In the bottom right hand corner is a services button. If you press the services button, you'll see all the currently activated services available on that IQ register. Today we're talking about the water sensor, so I'm going to navigate the cursor down to water sensor using the down arrow button, and then I'm going to press OK. You will see that I've already activated the service for water sensor. If water sensor is currently not activated on your device, scroll down to yes and press OK and it will now be activated. Once activated, press the water sensor button in the bottom right hand corner. From this screen, we can begin to set up the water sensor. The first option is to choose which analog input we're going to utilize. If we press OK on analog input, this will give us a drop down box showing all the available analog inputs. In the case of my register, I only have a single analog input. If you have the Sense IQ board installed, that will give you an additional six inputs, totaling seven. All those inputs would display in this drop down list. In this case, I'll select my onboard analog input. Next, we can go ahead and set up the functions for that sensor by pressing the Sensor Setup button in the bottom right hand corner. You'll see once we enter the analog input setup, here are all the options we can set up and configure for that analog input. In this case, we're setting up Water Sensor. We can give a unique name to that Water Sensor. Currently, mine is called ANA Water, but you can name it whatever is fitting. The next field is the unit of measure. The water sensor always measures water in parts per million, so you can see here displayed PPM. The minimum and maximum raw supported value are just showing what the sensor is that we have connected. In this case, we're using a 4 to 20 milliamp analog input. So you can see I have it set to 4 and 20 milliamps. The less than 4 milliamps and greater than 20 milliamps allow us to set up conditions based on if we see a value of current less than these displayed amounts. In this case, we have less than 4 milliamps set to cause an error, and above 20 milliamps also set to cause an error. The next two parameters are used to set up what is 4 milliamps equal to and what is 20 milliamps equal to in terms of the unit of measure. In this case, my 4 milliamps is set to zero parts per million or no water, and my 20 milliamps is set to 50 parts per million, which means if I see 50 parts per million of water, I've reached my 20 milliamp limit. Part of the jig requirement for this sensor says that we have a limitation at 50 parts per million. The last field, analog error delay, allows us to add a time delay anytime we see an error. This helps to filter out any noise in the system. Next, we can set up the triggers. If we press the button in the bottom right hand corner for trigger setup, this takes us into the analog trigger setup. The analog I.O. trigger setup screen is used to set up the triggers that we use for the water sensor. The I.O. analog trigger setup is used to set up trigger values in the software. In this case, the jig requirement has two triggers that we want to set. The first, above 15 parts per million, we want to stop or pause the delivery, and we want to trigger a digital output. In this case, I'm triggering digital output 6, which is connected to a blue indication lamp. The second trigger 
is also set to trigger above a value of 30 parts per million. This time we want to end the delivery and terminate the transaction and also trigger digital output 6, which is my blue indicator lamp. Once you've set up your triggers like this, you can close out of the trigger setup. And once all your analog input is set up, you can close out of the analog input. And now the basic settings for the sensor are complete. There are a few additional parameters that we can set. So if we back out all the way back to the setup menu and then navigate to the security section and press OK, the security section allows us to set up a maintenance key. That maintenance key, when triggered, will be required to be entered in order to clear out the error condition that may occur. This happens if the value is read below 4 milliamps, above 20 milliamps, or the second trigger of 30 parts per million is reached. The user is required to contact a supervisor or maintenance to come out and enter the maintenance key. Next, we can navigate to the setup menu and then down to the setup home screen section. In the setup home screen, we can configure up to 12 bits of data that can be displayed on the main delivery screen. In this case, I want to make sure that I have my water sensor, in this case ANA Water Live, set to one of my customizable fields on the delivery screen. This will allow me to view the value of parts per million in real time. Next, we can navigate back to the main menu. Now that the setup is complete, we can put the unit back in the regular run mode by threading the bolt back in for the calibration mode. Once the bolt is back in, we can press the home button, and now we're back at the delivery screen. Next, we'll demonstrate how this feature works. To demonstrate this feature, I'll need a few additional pieces of equipment. First, I'll need a blue indication lamp. Second, I'll need some sort of 4 to 20 milliamp source. In this case, I don't have a water sensor, so I'll connect a 4 to 20 milliamp signal generator. To demonstrate this feature, I'll press the start button. You'll see, once I press the start button, the register resets and the blue indication lamp turns on. Part of the jig requirement states that once a delivery is started and water sense is active on that fueling, a blue lamp must be illuminated to show that the sensor is active. We'll begin fueling, and I'll press the show details so you can see live what's happening with the analog live water value. So here's my analog live water value here on my display screen. You'll see I'm reading 4 milliamps on my converter here. So as I begin to increase the current, you'll see in real time the live water sensor will also be reading its parts per million based on the current. Remember, our first trigger value is set to 15 parts per million. So once I get above 15 parts per million, after the 10 second delay that's built into the software, the system will pause the delivery. Once the delivery has been paused, you'll notice that the alert screen is displayed on the IQ register, and also that the blue indication lamp is now flashing in a slow manner, about once per second. You'll see on the screen an alert for the fueler that the water sensor shutdown has been detected. It'll show you what the threshold of 15 parts per million was and what the value was that the sensor was reading, in this case, 16 parts per million. It will also tell the fueler that a fueling has been paused due to the detection of water above the triggered volume that's been set. It recommends that a chemical water detection test should be performed. However, at this point in the fueling, once they have done the chemical water detection test and validated that the system is okay to fuel, they can press OK, then resume, and now they can continue fueling. You'll notice that the blue light is again illuminated in a solid fashion and that they continue fueling. Now, if we turn up the analog signal even more and we surpass our second trigger value of 30 parts per million, again, after our 10 second delay, once the register has surpassed the 30 parts per million mark, you'll again see a display screen showing water sensor shutdown detected. You'll see that the threshold of 30 parts per million was exceeded, in this case, 31 parts per million. 
It also says that the sensors detect a threshold value greater than the permissible value. Report this immediately to your supervisor. And then you'll see this line here that says, enter maintenance key to unlock the unit. This is where that maintenance key that we entered into security mode comes into play. If I press the OK button, that brings me into a maintenance key section. I can enter in a key here, but if it's not the correct value, it's going to tell me that that's an invalid entry. At this point, there's nothing the fueler can do to cancel out of this error message. They cannot continue fueling until they've contacted a supervisor or maintenance and entered in the proper key. In this case, my key is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once I press the OK button, that clears the error message and the unit is now ready to go back into service. Next, I will simulate what happens when our current is below 4 milliamps. On my signal generator, I've set my signal to be below 4 milliamps and I'm going to start a delivery. Once I start the delivery, my blue indication light illuminates and within the allotted time, the error pops up and you can see that the water detection was shut down. The raw current value was below 4 milliamps and again, it's instructing the fueler of why it shut the system down and then telling you to enter the maintenance key to unlock the unit. So if I go in and press OK, again, I can enter my maintenance code and press OK, and now the error is cleared. For my last example, I'll show you what happens when the current is above 20 milliamps. I've set my simulator to be above 20 milliamps and send a signal to my IQ register. You'll see my water sense live value is already over 50 parts per million. So when I hit start now, the light comes on, the delivery starts, and very quickly the system shuts down and goes into an error. You'll see my blue light is flashing rapidly. Again, I have my water sensor shutdown detected error message, and it's asking me to enter maintenance key. So again, if I press OK, I enter my maintenance key, press OK, and that will clear the message. This concludes our Boost Your IQ session on WaterSense. Should you have any further questions or comments, please do not hesitate to contact Liquid Control's Customer Service Department. Thank you for your time.